For centuries, we've gazed upon the familiar faces of our solar system, the fiery Mars, the majestic Jupiter, the life-filled Earth. They are the titans of our cosmic neighborhood, worlds we've studied and dreamed of for generations. But in the shadows of these giants, a universe of secrets awaits. We're going on a journey to the hidden worlds, starting with two planets so far flung, they're in a class all their own. These are not gas giants, they are ice giants. While Jupiter and Saturn are mostly hydrogen and helium gas, Uranus and Neptune are fundamentally different. More than 80% of their mass is a hot, dense fluid of icy materials, water, methane, and ammonia, crushed under immense pressure above a small, rocky core. This unique composition is the key to their bizarre nature, and these frigid worlds are anything but quiet. On Neptune, the winds are the fastest in the solar system, but its colossal storms hide a strange secret about how shallow they really are. Welcome to Neptune, where winds scream at supersonic speeds of up to 1,500 miles per hour, 2,400 kilometers per hour, the fastest ever detected in the solar system. When the Voyager 2 spacecraft flew by in 1989, it witnessed an Earth-sized anti-cyclonic storm raging in the southern hemisphere, the Great Dark Spot. But unlike Jupiter's Great Red Spot, which has persisted for centuries, Neptune's storms are ghosts. They form, rage, and vanish within a few years, hinting at a completely different atmospheric engine. For decades, the reason was a mystery. The first clue came from a surprising discovery. By analyzing Neptune's gravitational field, scientists realized these violent storms are confined to a remarkably thin weather layer no more than 680 miles deep. If the storms were deeper and more massive, they would cause a greater wobble in the planet's gravity, a wobble that just isn't there. Below this chaotic veneer, the atmosphere is strangely quiet. So what causes this on-again, off-again weather? A recent theory points to methane. Deep in the atmosphere, where it's warmer, methane may form a stable, saturated layer that acts like a wet blanket, trapping heat from the planet's interior. When this layer occasionally destabilizes, pent-up heat bursts forth, fueling a massive, short-lived storm before the blanket settles back into place. This explains the planet's ghostly, transient tempests. Its neighbor, Uranus, presents a different puzzle. It's a paler, more cyan blue. This isn't because it has less methane, it actually has more. Instead, it seems Uranus has a more stagnant, sluggish atmosphere, allowing a thick layer of haze to build up and concentrate, giving it a whiter, more washed-out appearance compared to Neptune's deep azure. But a bit of haze is the most normal thing about Uranus. This planet is so strange, it redefines what a year can be. This is the defining feature of Uranus. Its axis is tilted by nearly 98 degrees. It's essentially rolling around the sun on its side. This bizarre orientation is thought to be the scar from a cataclysmic collision with an Earth-sized protoplanet billions of years ago. This ancient catastrophe dictates its entire climate today. A year on Uranus lasts 84 Earth years, combined with its extreme tilt. This results in the most extreme seasons imaginable. For 21 straight years, one pole is bathed in continuous sunlight, an endless summer day. Meanwhile, the opposite pole is plunged into a 21-year-long winter of absolute darkness. We've watched this happen. Thanks to the long watch of the Hubble Space Telescope, we've seen the northern polar region brighten as it heads towards its summer, while the southern hemisphere, which was lit when Voyager 2 flew by, slips into darkness. But this creates a puzzle. The extreme solar heating at the poles should drive incredibly violent weather. Yet when Voyager 2 flew by, the planet was eerily calm. Even stranger, massive storms were finally seen in 2014, a full seven years after the sun was shining most directly on the equator. This huge time lag suggests the atmosphere has immense thermal inertia. It takes years to react to the sun's heat, hinting at a deep, slow-moving climate system that scientists are still trying to understand. A 21-year-long night is hard to imagine, but what's happening deep inside these planets is even more unbelievable. Forget water, it's raining solid diamonds. Deep inside Uranus and Neptune, thousands of miles below the cloud tops, the conditions are hellish. Pressures are millions of times greater than on Earth, and temperatures reach thousands of degrees. Under this strain, 
methane molecules are literally squeezed apart. The carbon atoms, stripped of their hydrogen, are compressed together until they crystallize into solid diamonds which, being denser than their surroundings, slowly rain down toward the planet's core. This isn't just a wild theory. In laboratories on Earth, scientists have recreated these conditions. By blasting hydrocarbon samples with powerful lasers, they have successfully forged nanodiamonds, proving the process is possible. Recent experiments suggest this can happen at even lower pressures than first thought, meaning the diamond-forming layer could be much shallower. This single spectacular process could be a grand unified theory for the ice giants. As the diamonds sink, friction generates heat. This could explain why Neptune radiates more than twice the energy it receives from the sun. This diamond rain would also stir a surrounding layer of conductive fluid, generating the bizarre, off-center magnetic fields that are so different from Earth's. It's a process that ties together a planet's energy, its magnetic field, and its very chemistry. And since many Neptunes are one of the most common types of exoplanets, this process could be happening on countless worlds across the galaxy. If planets can rain diamonds, what can their moons do? To find out, we're heading to Neptune's largest moon, a captured world with a violent past and a very active present. This is Triton, Neptune's largest moon. But it wasn't born here. Its backward orbit is the smoking gun that proves it's a captured object from the Kuiper Belt, a lonely wanderer that strayed too close to Neptune and was ensnared by its gravity. That violent capture event likely melted its interior, kickstarting a process that remains active today. When Voyager 2 flew past, it saw something astonishing, active volcanoes, not of molten rock, but of ice and gas. These are cryovolcanoes, geysers that spew nitrogen gas and dark, dusty material up to five miles high into Triton's tenuous atmosphere. These eruptions are constantly repaving the surface, which is why Triton has very few craters and is one of the youngest surfaces in the solar system. This constant geological activity, driven by Neptune's gravitational pull, shows that a world doesn't need to be large to be dynamic. It just needs an energy source. Active volcanoes of ice are a shock, but you don't have to travel to the edge of the solar system to find hidden water. The biggest surprise might be lurking in the asteroid belt. Between Mars and Jupiter lies the asteroid belt, long thought to be a graveyard of inert rock, but orbiting within it is Ceres, an object so large it has pulled itself into a sphere and is classified as a dwarf planet. And thanks to NASA's Dawn mission, we now know it's no dead rock. Dawn's cameras revealed hundreds of patches of dazzlingly bright material. The most famous in Akador Crater are not ice. They are vast deposits of sodium carbonate, essentially washing soda, a type of salt. This discovery was a bombshell. Some of these salts are hydrated, meaning they have water locked in their crystal structure. In the vacuum of space, they should dehydrate and break down within centuries. The fact that they are still there means they must have reached the surface very, very recently. This is the smoking gun for a deep, long-lived reservoir of salty water, a brine ocean stretching for hundreds of miles beneath the icy crust. Ceres is an ocean world. This discovery shatters our old ideas of where water can exist. Internal heat from the decay of radioactive elements, combined with the antifreeze properties of salts, can maintain a liquid ocean far from the sun's warmth. The solar system is far wetter than we ever imagined. An ocean hiding in an asteroid is a game changer, but what about the asteroids that are less wet and more metal? The Dawn mission also visited Vesta, the second largest object in the belt, and it couldn't be more different from Ceres. Vesta is a dry, rocky world, a protoplanet that survived the solar system's violent youth. Its surface is dominated by a colossal impact basin named Rhea Silvia, the scar of a collision so violent it nearly shattered Vesta and blasted pieces of its crust all the way to Earth, which we find today as a specific class of meteorites. Vesta survived. Another protoplanet likely did not. Meet 16 Psyche. Radar observations suggest it's not made of rock or ice, but mostly of metal. The leading theory is that Psyche is the exposed iron-nickel core of a world like Vesta, whose rocky mantle and crust were stripped away by a series of catastrophic hit-and-run collisions. 
Visiting Psyche is like taking a journey to the center of the Earth. NASA's Psyche mission, now on its way, will be humanity's first ever look at a planetary core. By studying this metal world, we can piece together the story of how planets form, differentiate, and sometimes die. A world made of metal isn't just a scientific curiosity, it's a potential treasure trove. This raises a question that could define humanity's future in space. Asteroids like these represent a potential cosmic gold rush, not just for precious metals like platinum, which could be worth trillions, but for something even more valuable in space. Water. Water from asteroids can be split into hydrogen and oxygen, breathable air and rocket propellant. This could create a self-sustaining in-space economy, refueling missions to Mars and beyond without the immense cost of launching everything from Earth. But this is incredibly difficult. We still need to develop mining techniques that work in zero gravity, and the startup costs are astronomical. More importantly, there are serious risks. Unregulated mining could create vast clouds of debris, worsening the space junk problem and threatening a chain reaction of collisions that could render Earth orbit unusable. We are at a fork in the road where our next steps could either enable a sustainable future in space or trap us on our own planet. But the most valuable resource we could ever find in space isn't gold or platinum. It's life. And two moons in our solar system are the prime suspects. Welcome back to the outer solar system and to Jupiter's moon Europa. Decades of evidence, from its strange magnetic field to its young fractured surface, all point to one stunning conclusion. Beneath its 10 to 15 mile thick ice shell lies a global, salty, liquid water ocean containing more than twice the water of all of Earth's oceans combined. And there are tantalizing hints that this ocean is venting into space. Telescopes have captured what appear to be plumes of water vapor erupting from the surface. If these plumes come from the deep ocean, they could carry signs of life to the surface, where a future mission like NASA's Europa Clipper could sample them. But for our final hidden world, we go to Saturn's moon Enceladus. Here, the plumes are not a suspicion, they are a certainty. NASA's Cassini spacecraft flew directly through them, and what it found changed everything. Cassini's instruments tasted the spray. It found water vapor, organic compounds, salts, and the smoking gun, molecular hydrogen and tiny silica nanoparticles. This combination is definitive proof of active hydrothermal vents on Enceladus's seafloor, where ocean water is reacting with a hot, rocky core. On Earth, these same kinds of vents are teeming with life that thrives on chemical energy, no sunlight required. This means Enceladus isn't just a world with the potential for life. It is a confirmed, active, habitable environment. It has all three ingredients for life as we know it, liquid water, organic building blocks, and a source of energy. It is, right now, the most promising place beyond Earth to search for life. From planets that rain diamonds to asteroids with hidden oceans, from captured moons with ice volcanoes to the exposed metal heart of a long dead world, our journey to the hidden corners of the solar system reveals a place far more dynamic, complex, and surprising than we ever knew. The old lines between planet, moon, and asteroid are blurring as we find planetary processes, oceans, volcanoes, and complex chemistry in the most unexpected of places. The journey to unravel these mysteries has just begun. Missions are already on their way to explore these hidden worlds, to taste their plumes and map their metal surfaces. They continue our timeless quest to understand the cosmos and our place within it. Because if there's one thing these hidden worlds have taught us, it's that there is always another secret waiting to be discovered. Discover the universe's astonishing secrets with us. If you're as fascinated as we are by diamond rain, hidden oceans, and the potential for life beyond Earth, hit subscribe and join our journey as we continue to unravel the mysteries of these hidden worlds.